So here I'm going to talk about taxation and principles of microeconomics. I'm going to briefly talk about the idea of kind of why we tax. Um, a lot of times it's to raise revenue, but it's also to encourage you know, good behavior, discourage bad behavior. We'll talk about tax incidence, which is who pays the tax between producers and consumers. Right. Now, there's actually a lot of things that are taxes. They're not always called taxes. People don't like the word tax. So you'll see things like user fees, license fees. Um, but either way, I'm just going to kind of treat everything like a tax and keep it simple. But uh, taxation in general is, you know, per item or um, charged by the government for some product sold or some sort of activity. Um, it, it, one big thing is it influences behavior. It actually changes the optimal quantity because it changes people's cost-benefit decision. If I have to pay a tax, it's going to be more expensive, so I'm going to do less of it. And you could also have a subsidy, which is an opposite tax, where they give you money to do something good. Right? Um, also, it raises revenue for the government. Right? That's kind of the original idea of taxes is that you know sales taxes go to fund things because every item you buy costs a little bit more. Um, these actually contradict um, because if you were influenced, like smoking, you get everybody to quit smoking, you get zero uh, cigarette tax revenue. And right? so there's actually kind of a reason why things are taxed that people will still do. All right, they're inelastic. Okay, um, but we're going to use the supply demand graphs to draw a tax. Then we're going to talk about uh, the effects on welfare, consumer surplus, producer surplus, and then deadweight loss. We're going to see taxation transfers money to the government, tra uh, takes away welfare to consumers and producers, but it also does reduce overall society welfare. Okay, depends on the type of tax, right? I'm not going to get into that. People try to structure the most effective tax. You might hear about Pigouvian taxes um, and things like that, but right now I'm just going to draw it like one simple tax. Okay, and then incidents. Remember, an incidence is something. An incident is something that happens. Um, basically, who does the tax happen to? And that I mean, tax incidence is is the split. Do producers or consumers pay a large proportion? All right. And a lot of this depends on the demand curve or the elasticity of demand. Remember that substitution. Okay. And the idea is that the more elastic demand, the more substitutes you have. Um, if there, if you have to pay a tax and you you add it to your price, you're going to lose a lot of customers. Okay. But if you have inelastic demand, you might be able to push the cost onto your buyers. Okay. All right. So any tax raises costs. I'm just going to draw it like that. An increase in supply, or excuse me, decrease in supply because of an increase in cost. It's going to reduce the quantity demand. Right. And that might be intended. Right. You have cigarette tax it discourages smoking, but it might be unintended. Right. So you have an income tax and people don't want to work, or uh, say you know interest tax. People want to save money or something like that. So sometimes this could be a bad result as well. All right. but one thing that's important to note is that if you reduce the quantity um, here, you're going to reduce the quantity supplied. It's going to be the higher cost firms. So either companies are going to have to lower their costs or you are, or uh, they're going to go out of business. Right? And so because they lowered their costs, it could be selling property, it could be laying workers off, it could be becoming more efficient. Then they can pay this tax here, which is if they're going to pay this tax, part of it is a higher price, right? but part of it is actually reduced cost. Okay, and that, that's where tax incidence comes in. Now, here, without any kind of distortion, you see this big green triangle. It's kind of cut off, but that's consumer surplus. And then the dark red triangle is producer surplus or profit. Um, if you introduce the tax, you wind up reducing quantity uh, produced and consumed. The remaining quantity sold, here's the tax. You get this orange rectangle. That is every item pays the tax, and it goes to the government, P times Q or tax times Q in this case, T times Q. But th these don't happen. This no longer is bought or sold, and that's deadweight loss. Remember, this big triangle is two smaller triangles. Um, it's lost consumer surplus because consumers no longer buy it anymore. It's too expensive. And it's lost producer surplus because these companies went out of business. Now, consumer surplus is smaller. Producer surplus is smaller. Um, consumers pay more. They get less welfare. Producers can't, uh, they produce less as well, and, and they have to do it at a lower point here. So the part, this triangle comes, excuse me, this rectangle comes out of consumer and producer surplus, but this triangle is actually lost to society. So ta that's the distortion. Taxes do reduce overall welfare. Um, and that's why some people are really anti-tax. Okay. Now tax incidence is when tax is split between producers and consumers, but it doesn't have to be equal. Sometimes it has to be completely absorbed by the consumers because they uh, because producers can can afford to do it because consumers will still pay it. Other times it has to be completely paid by the producers. All right. In other words, if they raise prices to cover the tax, they would lose business too much, so they have to somehow come up with the money through lower costs. Okay. This depends on the elasticity of demand. Here is inelastic on the left and elastic on the right. We're going to see a difference in terms of the proportion of how much of the tax is paid. Okay. And so the way to think about it is. <clears throat> 
if I'm if I'm hit with a tax, do I do my customers have somewhere else to go? Do they have substitutes? If they do, I can't raise the price. I have to somehow come up with it myself. But if there's fewer substitutes, my customers will pay it, then I can afford to pass the cost on to them. So with inelastic demand, I'm going to try and keep these the same tax for both. Here you find out that it does reduce quantity. Here's the tax like before. Same tax for elastic demand. Now it's, this looks a little bit bigger, but, but let's just assume it's all the same. Look at the proportion. This is about 50-50, right? The price goes up a little bit, but costs go down a little bit. But over here, right, much more of this is absorbed by the producer. So much less proportion is paid by the is rising prices. And that makes sense because with elastic demand, this high increase in costs is going to force a lot of customers elsewhere because they have substitutes. Remember, they have somewhere else to go. And that also means that the firm cannot afford to pass the cost on to them. Right? So tax incidence is more heavily weighted toward the consumer all right, um, if it's inelastic demand and more heavily weighted toward the producer if it's elastic demand. Okay. So that's kind of uh, why, you know, certain, like I mentioned, certain products are taxed more. If, if I tax a business and put it out of business, I won't collect any revenue, all right? So that, that, that's why we tax things like smoking and driving, and that's contradictory, right? Um, because you tax bad behavior, you get people to quit smoking, but smoking funds health programs. You also, some people think driving is bad, so tax gasoline, right? But this does fund roads, right? So those contradict. You, you, you have to keep people smoking to get the, the revenue, right? Um, but if, but it also shows that taxing restaurants are different from taxing things like gasoline, right? If you tax restaurants, you can put them out of business. If you tax one type of restaurant, you know, downtown, people will go to a different neighborhood. If you tax um, restaurants in a city, then people go across the border. Um, there's a lot of substitutes, but there's not a whole lot of substitutes for gasoline. Now, if you talk about, you know, the supply side, yes, you could get electric cars in a few years, right? But right now, people are just going to pay more at the pump, so you can tax gasoline and just collect that revenue. Right? So sometimes it's intended and sometimes it's unintended, but it all depends on the type of product being taxed. Sometimes taxes can put businesses out of business if there's a lot of substitutes. Right? And then there's also that conflict between revenue and changing behavior. Right? So just think about the idea that elasticity matters in terms of incidents and it matters in terms of what happens to a specific pick firm. But then you should also think about what happens with um, welfare, consumers, producers, the government, as well as society, which is deadweight loss.